sea level. So there's uh, there's uh, not very uh, many places to go when a large wave um, comes in like one of these. Well, Chris, for now, thank you very much. Stay on the line if you can, because we're watching these really quite dramatic pictures now coming into us. And I understand these are from Sendai. That is in the east of the country, very close to the epicenter. Uh, the latest that we have now is that tsunami warnings have also been issued for Taiwan, for Russia, for Marcus Islands, Guam and Wake Island. Five nuclear plants have been shut down in Japan. And you can just see the strength of that water now that's about to hit land. And we've been seeing uh, amazing scenes and very alarming scenes of the power, the strength of this water that sweeps up everything in its path. We have another eyewitness, Ms. Team. Uh, Catherine Wallace is in Tokyo, the Japanese capital. And uh, Catherine, first of all, take us through again what happened when the earthquake, earthquake struck. Of course, the epicenter is miles away to the north and east of you, but you still felt the effects in the capital. Yes, um, just the whole building started shaking and um, often tremors will just start and then go away but this one just kept going and going and going getting it stronger so we all basically dived under the desks um, and the building just continued to, to shake quite alarmingly. And we're reading reports of many people having been injured after a roof collapsed at a hall at a, a, a Tokyo a graduation ceremony for 600 students. Um, also reports of fires, Catherine. Um, yes. Do you see any evidence of that? Yes, um, actually from the office where I work, um, we could see one of the biggest ones, which was in a building in Odaiba, um, which is a, it's a newish area out in Tokyo Bay. Um, and I think um, quite a tall building and the, it was a very large fire on the top floors of the building. And um, there is a, obviously there is a tsunami warning, an alert yes. out for the entire country. Do you feel that there's an emergency impending? Um, certainly um, in some areas north of Tokyo. Um, Tokyo, not so much, I don't think, um, although we're hearing a lot of sirens and helicopters and the um, public warning system going periodically. And I um, understand from some friends, they were actually caught in the subways, which stopped when the earthquake hit. Um, and there's also been a number of evacuations of buildings, although ours has not been evacuated yet. But certainly the north part of, of the country, it's, it's extremely serious. Indeed. Now, Japanese people obviously have become, sadly, uh, rather used to this kind of seismic activity. Uh, there are civil training programs, aren't there, for people yes. to go through. Are people practiced? Do they know what to do in a situation like this? Um, yes, they do. Um, certainly, there's Sorry, there's sorry, Catherine, to interrupt yes. you, but uh, we can go You're live fine. now to a press we conference that's being, that's being given by a by member of the Japanese government. Let's listen in. in. Cooperation, cooperation with, with local governments. That was Tetsuro Fukuyama, uh, Deputy Chief Counsel. Ten metres, thanks. Okay, uh, returning to Catherine Wallace, who is in Tokyo. Catherine, what are your plans now? How do you plan to uh, deal with the tsunami warning? And um, we're, we're hearing of that tsunami uh, being of the proportion of 10 metres. Yes, um, up in the northern areas, up in Fukushima, um, Miyagiwate areas, yeah, 10 metres. Um, and we've just seen on the TV... Um, broadcasting the actual whole tsunami wave approaching um, the coastline. Um, so it's, it's, it's actually another um, tsunami wave that's um, an area that's already been swamped. Um, in Tokyo, yet we haven't received any evacuation order, um, although um, people are at the alert ready. And just as I was speaking to you earlier, the building was shaking again. So that's an, another aftershock, Catherine. Yes, yes. And uh, we're yeah. also getting um, uh, we're getting some comments coming into us here at the BBC uh, from people, other people in Tokyo. Catherine Tom uh, is saying that he lives in central Tokyo near the highly populated districts of Shinjuku and ah, Ikebukuro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he says the initial earthquake increased in intensity. It forced him and others to leave the building and to yeah. look about overhead. Um, what's the situation with regard to power? Are the power lines still up? Obviously, there is still, uh, telephony system is still yes. intact. 
Yeah, the power the power is still up at the moment. Um, we haven't lost any um, lighting power, and we're still connected um, to computers and the internet at the moment. 